Welcome to the Calazan Show. Prepare yourself to be taken on a warrior's journey. We urge you to watch Calazan's as he continues to prove to you and to himself as being the instructor. Calazan's Karate and Kung Fu, where body, mind, and spirit learn balance, health, courage, and harmony. Martial arts, the name alone conjures legends. Karate and Kung Fu, ninjas and white crane, Wing Chun and Gojo Ru, age-old systems for honing body, mind, and spirit into such brilliant harmony that superhuman feats become commonplace. Bruce Lee conquers the dragon. Chuck Norris keeps an entire town in line. Steven Seagal thwarts armies of terrorists. Mr. Miyagi teaches the Karate Kid not merely to know how to overcome an opponent, but to know himself. Where does the truth lie amidst these fabulous legends? And does that truth have something to offer your life? Kalazans, renowned master of the Kalazans Karate and Kung Fu system in Norwalk, Connecticut, believes it can change your life. Kalazans himself spent years of training, not only in martial arts, but in dance, movement, gymnastics and sports, as well as philosophy. On other shows, we'll take you on the odyssey of his early life and show you how he gained mastery. Now listen to Kalazans as he explains how he wishes to utilize all of his skills and how these skills can be a benefit to you. I just want that everyone in this planet understand that martial arts can be for everyone, especially those over the age of 40, those educated, the professor, the scientist, the doctor, the lawyer, the engineer, everyone there can benefit from it. But before they benefit from this beautiful art, they must understand who is the right instructor for them. But above all, they must understand that martial arts is not just kicks and punches. It goes beyond that point. This is why I am able to teach coordinated movements first and techniques later. My system is very traditional, but very unique. And it is designed from many disciplines to have a level of learning that is appropriate for everyone. My desire as a teacher is to help each man, woman, or child who comes to my dojo to reach his or her full potential at whatever pace is possible for each individual student in the reality of their everyday lives, I want to help them reach their dreams. The same focus and mental disciplines that changes the body, recreates the mind and spirit as well. Students use this enhanced ability in business and in life. There are certain basic skills common to all martial arts. The key is an understanding that each body is different and each student, young or old, must learn at his or her own special pace. It is very important to avoid injury and to strengthen the muscle week by week until they can achieve their goals. We all the time remind students that we have proved over and over and over that we are probably the only school that can teach you how to fight without brutality. But still, that does not mean that we do not teach brutality. You know what? I am just making sure that you do not underestimate our talent and skill. Whatever shape you're in when you begin, with commitment and hard work, you can become both strong and balanced. Over the coming weeks, we'll focus on individual skill 
and methods to help you understand what martial arts can mean to your life. One of the age old methods for strengthening both body and the ability to focus the mind is called kata. This is a ritualized series of movements which can go as long or short as the artistical level of that individual who created that kata wanted to go, meaning they are no limit to a kata or a form. That is in reality a method of utilizing all the muscle you need for self-defense, agility, and health in a choreographed manner that makes them both beautiful and powerful. Yet, if you are familiar with karate and kung fu, then you will know that in karate, the katas are shorter than the forms of kung fu. Kalazans was the sixth born of 11 children in his family. His parents owned a farm and had high expectations for their son who would one day run the family business. While Kalazan's father was very strict and demanding, his son was very determined to exceed his father's expectations. He worked faster and better than any of his father's farm workers. He would break the wildest horses, became an expert with a machete, and at the age of 10 was supervising his father's workers. In addition to working long hours on the farm, Calazans did very well in school and took on the responsibility of protecting those around him who were the targets of thugs and ruffians. Because he came to the rescue of those who were victimized, many of the townspeople loved and respected him. His neighbors would tell his father that this boy did not belong on the farm. He was destined for greater things. As he grew older, many young ladies thought he would make the perfect husband, father, and provider. Understand that it was very common to get married at age 13. In such a small town, marriage was the logical next step for a young man like Calazans. But deep down inside, he knew in his heart that he wanted to leave the farm. Calazans' goal was to become the most educated man in the Dominican Republic. Achieving this goal meant he had to leave the farm and establish himself in the city in order to start his journey. He wanted to enroll in some of the best schools in the country, but he knew how expensive they were. While his father supported his son's desire to become the most educated man in the country, he could not afford to pay for all the courses his son wanted to take. Calazans was determined to reach his goal and decided he would have to pay for the additional courses himself. Calazans moved to the city of Santiago and enrolled in a prominent business school. For four years, all he did was work and study. He supported himself by painting cars and making cigars. He studied in the park and slept no more than two hours a night. This grueling schedule did not bother him because he was determined to fulfill his dream. While in Santiago, Calazans was introduced to two activities that would one day lead him to his life's work teaching and the martial arts. Calazans was hired to teach clerical business classes. His boss was amazed at his natural ability to get students excited about learning. Since he was not formally trained as a teacher, he did not teach in traditional ways. He used innovative teaching methods to get his point across and the students loved it. Two years of teaching clerical business was enough for the students to get attached to Calazans. So attached that it caused trouble for his supervisor, a well-known accountant and teacher who sent him to work for the Dominican Popular Bank. Later on, he regretted that move as he lost most of his students when Calazans left. During this time, Calazans saw his first martial arts demonstration and was immediately hooked. What excited him the most about karate was the use of legs as weapons. All his life he had been fascinated with the natural and awesome power that could be generated by the human leg. He remembered having to milk the nastiest cow on the farm. She did not want to give milk that day, so she kicked him in the belly. Calazan's reflexes caused him to automatically kick her back, and to his surprise, he knocked her out cold. From then on, he used his legs whenever he had to fight off gangs and bullies and found that this gave him a great advantage. Calazans immediately started training in the martial arts. The first style he studied was Gojo-ru. 
farm life had prepared him for the heavy and intensive training that Gojo-ru karate demanded. Kalazans was determined to master this art and trained with 100% intensity. While he trained daily in karate, he never imagined that he could pursue the martial arts as a career. Still, he grew increasingly depressed at the prospect of spending the rest of his life behind a desk. He convinced the bank managers to send him to the United States to study English. The bank could not refuse the demand of Calazans. They knew how educated he was already. By this time, Calazans had received many diplomas, several in different languages, so he was sent to study English as a second language at the University of Bridgeport. Once in the United States, he contacted his managers and told him he was never coming back. He was determined to make it in America. Calazans had to stay enrolled at the University of Bridgeport and maintain average grades in order to be legal in the United States. Most of his time, however, was spent studying and training in the martial arts. He commuted to New York and studied Chen Chong and Wing Chun. As Calazan studied Wing Chun, he realized that the combination of Gojo Ru and Wing Chun were enough to teach a well-balanced martial artist. One of Calazan's main ideas was to teach simplicity, but also be educated enough to teach a very complex system of martial arts. He remembered trading karate training for judo lessons with a Japanese classmate. In order to expand his knowledge of the human body and develop balance, he studied ballet, jazz, and tap dancing. He supported himself as a waiter and bartender and eventually opened a small school where he taught a small but growing group of students. Today, Calazans teaches martial arts with the same innovation that he used in the Dominican Republic. He believes that if you can get a student excited, they will love to learn. He also passes on the lessons that he learned on his own personal journey. You don't have to be a brilliant genius to excel. All you need is a goal and an unshakable desire to make it come true. Would it surprise you to learn there's a great deal more to martial arts than watching Bruce Lee movies might suggest? For example, did you know there's a specialized branch of martial arts that has to do only with healing, another with sexuality, another with longevity and permanent wellness? In fact, the true nature of martial arts is to bring body, mind, and spirit into perfect harmony by the development of a whole series of skills that most of the world doesn't even know exists. What magic is it that allows a martial artist to do seemingly impossible feats? Can a human being really break boards and bricks with his hands? A martial arts master will tell you that what makes these feats possible is something called chi, an elusive but powerful energy that up until recently wasn't even heard of in Western society. To understand chi as it applies to human potential, you must look at the human body not as a Western doctor, but as a Chinese, Japanese, or Indian doctor would do so. This acupuncture chart is a good place to start. The lines that traverse the body are electrical energy conduits. The dots are places on the electrical grid that affect your life. Here's where a Chinese doctor can tinker with your circulatory to improve your health. Dr. Jeffrey Zimmerman is not only an acupuncturist, he is a master of qi. Dr. Zimmerman will be telling us a little about how he uses qi in his medical practice. He likes to make these comments very often. There's a tradition amongst martial artists that once you know how to kill, you must also know how to heal. We're going to show you two demonstrations of the power of qi. In the following demonstration, Jeff will begin by enhancing his chi with an ancient Taoist exercise called Tai Chi. Unlike the Tai Chi forms you may be familiar with, Taoist Chi allows the chi to move the body in a vibratory way. 
The chi frequency accelerates the body's movements. Although it looks a bit odd and spastic, this powerful technique will allow Jeff to keep Kevin McIntyre, a very large and powerful martial artist, from being able to hold him down. As the chi surges through Jeff, Kevin's large, strong body is actually bounced off the ground so he cannot hold Jeff down or overpower him. In a second demonstration of chi, Dr. Zimmerman will show us how it can be raised to create needle-free acupuncture. I'm absolutely delighted to be here today with Dr. Jeffrey Zimmerman. He is a doctor of oriental medicine, an acupuncturist, and he is also a specialist in a very rarefied form of Chinese medicine called fagong. Now, you'll be delighted to know that this is a form of acupuncture that allows you not to use needles. For all of those out there who are chicken about having needles placed in their bodies, fagung is definitely the answer for you. Hi, Jeff. I'm so happy you were able to join us today. Thank you for inviting me. Jeff and I are old pals. We actually were students of the same acupuncturist a long time ago, and Jeff went on to all this rarefied medical business that we're going to tell you a little bit about today. At any rate, we have Becca Slade, who is the, uh, the body on the table. She has volunteered volunteered to has volunteered her body as long as we don't put needles into it um, and she's going to tell us what she feels of the chi because this story is really all about chi. Jeff would you like to explain a little bit about exactly how the Chinese modality differs from the Western view of how the body works? I'm going to use this chart as a piece of illustrative material. Okay. Rather than saying that it differs from, I think the best thing to describe both medicines is we were actually work together. Western science has the physical body. Chinese medicine also has the physical body. But in addition to that, where they differ is that oriental medicine actually believes that there's a force technology is not sophisticated enough to see yet. We're on the verge of that, but we're not quite there yet. You might call it an electromagnetic field, and all of these lines that you see on an acupuncture chart are the lines in which the, the grid of electricity travels through the body. Now, the little dots that you see are the places where an acupuncturist can ordinarily place his needle to tinker with the electrical circuitry of the body. Right, but there's, there's a difference between Qigong and or Fagong and acupuncture, where the acupuncturist would place a needle in a particular place. When you actually have the experience of the sensation of the chi itself using fa gong, fa meaning external, gong uh, like the external chi. So what we would do is I can actually feel the chi and the patient can feel the chi in the point itself. If I'm manipulating the chi itself, there's a sensation in the body without actually using the needle. So um, now we're going to see what Becca feels. Let's see if Becca feels anything. We've n we've never met Becca before. Three or four minutes ago, and I'm just going to place my hands near your body, Becca, and just see if you feel anything, and then tell me if you uh, notice any sensation in your body. We'll start with your hand. I feel a lot of energy there. It feels very tingly and, and almost heavy, like a lot of pressure. So in a Chinese medicine diagnosis or a treatment plan, what we would do, let's say for example that she had a lung condition. This meridian, which is running along the outside of the inside of her arm close to me is called the lung meridian. So not only can we treat through the lung itself, but the electrical pathway that is associated with the lung. Why don't so if you, you feel show everyone this. how you would go about diagnosing? Would you go to the pulses first, Jeff, or would you tap right into the energy field? Well, let's talk about both of those things. In Chinese medicine, um, once one way of testing or listening to the body and treating the body, making a diagnosis, is through the pulses. So on the right wrist, you would listen to, let's call this the first position, the lung and large intestine, second position, stomach and spleen, third position, pericardium sanjiao. On the left-hand side, it would be heart and small intestine in the first position. Middle position would be liver gallbladder. And third position is kidney bladder. That is one of the techniques that the oriental um, medicine would use. And we listen to the various 
pulses individually and their relationship to each other. So your spleen can be working just fine, but its relationship with the stomach may be a little bit off, so that you need to work with the, you know, the stomach meridian to um, coax it to come back in harmony with a very strong spleen and all the interaction. So we could do this all day long, and I'm sure Rebecca <laughs> would like us to do it all day long. That's right. Not quite on this show, however. Well, thank you so much for showing us how this works, Jeff. I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who have wanted to get involved with acupuncture, but were scared to death of the needles. Right. So it's very encouraging to know that you don't actually have to use the needles in order to access their chi. You just have to find somebody who is trained and knowledgeable, actually, in qigong, fa gong. Now, this, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, is not so easy to do. So do remember Dr. Zimmerman's name because he's one of the very few practitioners of this ancient art form in our area. <laughs>
We thank you for joining us at the Calazans Karate and Kung Fu School. We hope you learned a little and enjoyed a lot. And we hope you'll stop by to meet Calazans himself and learn if this 1,500-year-old discipline may be the answer you've been looking for in your life. Whether you're seeking to expand your warrior skills, your health, your fitness, your ability to defend yourself, your self-confidence, or you're simply hoping to explore the many dimensions of your own being, we welcome you to the shared journey. Remember, as the ancient Chinese sages tell us, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Take that step. Call 203 846